Brunner House is made up of ex-developers from the now defunct Telltale game, which brought us amazing interactive stories from Guardians of the Galaxy, The Walking Dead, and Game of Thrones, and now they bring us Star Trek Resurgence on the Steam Deck. This video will be longer than usual because I need to explain to you what I needed to do to make this claim playable on the Steam Deck. The first thing you'll need is the Epic Launcher. If you're just interested in the gameplay, just go to minute 350. The problem is that this game is unplayable by default because it gives you no graphical settings, but I'll show you how to fix that. So you'll need to go to desktop mode, then open up your file manager Dolphin. Go to the path home deck dot steam steam. Let's now search for Star Trek one word. You need to do this because who knows where they actually install the actual game. So in my case, it will install it in the folder under the folder 33432928. But in your case, it's possible it's a completely different number. The rest of the path should be the same. In this case, it will be PFX, Drive C, User, App Data, Local, Star Trek Game, Save, Config, and then Windows Not Editor. I meant Windows no editor. The first thing we need to open is the actual game settings.ini and we're actually going to be caring about the lines 4 to 9. Notice how there are anti oscillation quality, shadow quality, post-processing quality, texture quality, effect quality, and foliage quality. And notice that they're all the number 3. That is those names we're going to need on the next file. So you can close that, but we actually need now the scalability ini and that's the actual file we're going to change. For whatever reason, when we change the other one, it never takes effect and it will always be number three. So we're going to cheat and we're going to make it believe that the three, which is the best uh, possible execution, will be the worst. So notice how I hit, will have pro, uh, post-processing quality, texture quality, effect quality, shadow quality, all those that you see previously. So you can go and pause and go in what the names uh, are or look here and notice that they're all at three. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to set them to the lowest possible settings, even though they should be by default the highest possible settings. So where did I get all this information? Where did I get all these numbers and settings? Ah, oh, that's easy. We're actually going to get them from the Unreal Engine site. So let's now open up Chrome and we can actually now go to docs, unrealengine.com, 5.2, ENUS, scalability reference for Unreal Engine. And this will allow us to actually grab those settings. I'm basically just going to do copy and paste to those actual to that actual file so basically for example if it's post processing i'll go to the zero setting i'm going to grab that whole set that you see down under in in orange uh, sorry in reddish i'm going to copy and paste that under post processing quality at three then if i'm going to actually do the next one which is shadow quality i'm going to grab the zero i'm going to say shadow quality uh, at three and i'm going to copy and, and paste that under it the same for texture i'm going to grab texture zero i'm going to copy and paste this uh, to that section and I'm going to do effects quality again I'm going to grab the zero put it under uh, effects quality at three and finally I'm going to actually going to do um, what was it oh foliage quality and I'm going to grab the zero settings and put our foliage quality uh, at three now I can also do the anti-isolation uh, which I, and for that case I'm just going to do the post process a quality and say equal to two four six or zero by default is six, but here's the bad news. Anytime I tried anything that wasn't the highest, it actually will do all sorts of ugly shimmering. So for that case, then just make sure, Just I, I just left it alone and didn't add this option. And then actually the game actually did no longer shimmer and the, the game was only two to four frames per second and that really didn't matter. Now the gameplay itself is going to be interesting. Once you do that, you no longer have to worry about having this terrible gameplay in the single digits or in the teens. Now the game will either go above 20 frames per second, and this is not a first person shooter, so it won't really matter, except for a couple of, uh, of examples. Or it will actually play between uh, 20 and 30 frames per second, or approach 30, 30 frames per second for the most part. Right here, you're gonna notice that when she's actually looking at the actual reflection in the actual um, um, in the actual window, it's going to actually drop to the high teens. But this is a rare case, and uh, this has rarely happened. And it also will happen all the way at the end if you see the last two. 
um, uh, videos that I actually have or the last two scenes that I actually have, you're also going to notice that those are very rare cases. In one of the scenes when they're in the throne room, you're going to see that it's going to go, it's going to stay around the mid uh, mid teens. And you're going to go, oh my God, that's terrible. Well, to be honest, it, it really didn't bother me by that point. After like five hours, it, they were so rare, that type of scenes. Most of the scenes will be either around 20 frames per second or around 30 frames per second. You will also notice something weird. Uh, there's the final scene I think that I have. It's actually down on the planet in the actual mines. And you're going to notice that there's like this beam that is like bringing all the rocks up. And anytime that beam actually goes into the actual scene, you'll notice it'll go even to the single digits. So my advice, don't look at the light. It's not beautiful. Because while you're not looking at the light or the, the actual beam itself is not there, you'll still get like around 30 frames per second. So it's some weird stuff that, that whatever that beam is causing in, in the background of the graphics is going to make it terrible. But anyway, the game actually plays a, a very good. And remember, this is not a first-person shooter, so even being at 20 frames per second, it, this is an interactive uh, 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 venture that basically there will be uh, different types of quick time events that will tell you to do this or do that. There are going to be some, uh, some firefights here and there, not, nothing to write home about and some uh, uh, driving or, or, or flying uh, the shuttle and things like that. But for the most part, the game will actually just be a story, an interactive story, and it's going to play out very good if you actually do what I did. I know it's a lot of work, but to be honest, the game actually plays very well, except for those exceptions that I gave you. And if you like what I'm bringing you, and you haven't done so yet, and want to, please don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button, and like this video. But anyway, I'll let you watch the rest of the video, and I'll see you on the next one. Ambassador Spock, my senior staff. It's not every day that a captain gets to welcome a Starfleet legend aboard. Hmm. You flatter me, Captain Solano. But legend implies the past tense, whereas I am very much focused on our present circumstances. I didn't mean to suggest you were stuck in the past. You're right, Ambassador. Not the most diplomatic choice of words. You are a legend, Ambassador. There's not an officer in Starfleet that doesn't know of your career. I would never assume that to be the case. We were hoping you could fill us in on the details. We got the basics from Starfleet. Two formerly peaceful neighbors are now on the brink of war. Indeed. And the tension between them grows fiercer by the hour. I think we're about to begin. Did you hear the arrogance from that guy? I don't know what we're walking into here. But that guy was something. That may be true. But let's keep an open mind going into the negotiations. Hopefully he's just one voice amongst many. Then let's hope he's the outlier. The Hotari have invited us as their guests, 
So we must show them the proper respect. Ambassador Spock, welcome to Holtari Prime. The honor is mine, Your Majesty. That the Federation would send one of their most respected representatives is not only an honor to the Holtari people and their queen, but a recognition of our stature and importance. Let's get on with it, shall we? With all due respect to the Federation and their ambassador, they have no authority here. We are not members of their alliance. We are not subject to their rule, nor yours. We demand the immediate return of all mining operations to Elidian control, as it has been for centuries and will be for centuries more. That has always been our understanding. That understanding has changed. Then you invite war. And if you cannot remain silent, you will be silenced. But his point is well taken. What is the Federation's interest in this matter? Perhaps you would have us trade one oppressor for another? The Federation remains neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution of this conflict. We are here at your request, Your Majesty. For now. I'm trying to keep an open mind here, but it's not easy. I thought they wanted us here. Was there something you wanted to say, Captain? Oh, no. My apologies. And what about the Cobliard? She's not part she of- She can speak for herself, can't she? Then let her. Now then, what is your name? Commander Jara Rydek, Your Majesty. Being a Kovliad, you would know better than anyone. Your people suffered brutal treatment at the hands of the Cardassians. Their injustice towards the Kovliad is as unimaginable as it is unforgivable. Not unlike how we have been treated by the Alidians. As much as they'd have you believe they are the victims here, remember it was the Hotari who attacked us. Hundreds of innocent Alidians were slaughtered without mercy in those mines. The blood is on their hands, not ours. Quiet! I'm a little afraid of what we might find down there. We'll be okay. I've survived worse than that. Well, I haven't. But I'll put my faith in you. For now. Jara. Stay back. There's a guard at the station. We'll have to hide. Who are you? What are you doing here? You watch your tone with me. I'm Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. I speak for the Queen herself. This is a restricted area. 
No one gains access without the approval of Galvin or Sidron. Wait. Jewess Gawad Abowincha. <laughs> Are you all right? I... I don't know. Are you injured? No, I, I just... I thought if I could talk my way through like always, I'd be fine, but... I'm, I, I, I'm a diplomat. This isn't what I do. I've never even fired a weapon. This is just... It's real now. I wasn't ready for this. Tylus, you can do this. I don't see what you're basing that on. All you've shown me so far is an iron-willed determination to save your people. I don't expect that's changed. No. No, it hasn't. My authority has never been challenged like that. It meant nothing to him. So we should assume any Hatari we encounter from here on can't be reasoned with. Agreed. The only loyalty they have down here is to Galvin and Sidron. Can you switch over the lift? The guard should have a scan card that will allow us to operate the switch. Got it. He's not dead, is he? He's still one of my people, and I didn't come here to take Otari lives. My phaser's set to stun. He'll be perfectly fine, just unconscious for a while. I see. We don't have that sort of technology on our weapons. Good to know.